I wanted to see like, okay, what's going to happen here? Are they going to go in here and get smoked by a really good team? Or are they going to show up and see how they play against like the big boys, right? Basically like the a possible Stanley cup winner, the Colorado, Colorado yeah. avalanche. But uh, anyway, so we get going here and I was like, right out of the gates, the Leafs look fucking awesome. Matthews, Flying. Matthews ends up getting two goals in this game, but even when it was zero zero, he was just buzzing from the opening phase up. I like he looked like on a mission, and I could tell right away. I'm like, oh, he's gonna something's gonna happen tonight. Right. He was like, he was just cooking. He seems, out he seems to always get up for those games, man. Like anytime it's head to head, everyone's talking Matthews versus McKinnon, you know. Colorado versus Toronto. He gets up for those games, and you're right. He was just flying. Like, you could just sense it was coming before it even happened. That's what she said. You could sense it was coming before it even came. That's what she said. You know? So, and then once it did came, it came quick. He came twice in 30 seconds. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Can't say I haven't been there before. No, well, twice that's tough to do, man. That is real tough. He came and then he came again immediately after. I know. That I know. Hard to do. Takes a special fucking player to do that, man. Yeah. Special. Yeah. But uh, and, and then we should point out that he didn't quite get it off, but he almost came a third time. Yeah. A minute he, later with a wrap around. Because he came he came twice so quick, he couldn't come again. He couldn't get he couldn't now for the rest time. of the rest of the game, he was done. It was done. It was, it was done. done. So anyway, so Mitch and Engvall end up staying in Toronto. They would not have flown out for this road trip because five days starting Friday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So maybe they'll join them at the end of the trip. Who fucking knows? But uh, anyway, so I'm thinking going into this game, like this is maybe why they look so good because they look great in the third period. We'll get to it all falling to part, uh, falling apart and going to shit, burn the fucking house down as we get to the third period. But the first period they look great so i'm thinking you know what they got vegas on tuesday maybe we're looking at a little situation where it's like all right boys you want to spend saturday night like fly out right after the game to vegas don't practice again until monday get a couple days off in vegas like go out put in a you know good effort get a good win. it's jack campbell's birthday today shout out jackie boy happy 30th birthday to our boy jack happy campbell. birthday jack campbell wayne campbell party on wayne I'm sure he's tying one on right now. Oh, I don't know. He was pissed after the game last night. But look, man, so I'm thinking maybe we got a little bit of a like Las Vegas fever, let's call it. <laughs> like, Forget the flu Rona cooking around. We got a little Las Vegas fever in the lease yeah. locker room. Can't wait to get to Vegas. And it started off good. It was looking promising. And then poof, up in fucking smoke she went. Wow. <laughs> it was, I thought... Uh, I mean, yeah, the first period they were flying. We go into the second period. I mean, Colorado scored at the end of the first period, like right at the end of the first period. Yeah, You get out of that first period up 3 nothing. it's yeah. a totally different game. But you gave them just a little bit of life. And this team, you give that Colorado just a sniff, yeah. they're going to be buzzing around it all yeah, day. Yeah, you can't give those guys a sniff. No. God, no, 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 no. God, no. So you keep you keep them far away. So former former Colorado Avalanche, Alexander Kerfoot was playing on the top line with the Brunt and Matthews in this game. And he gets a little two on one with Bunting and he buries it for the first goal. And so Kerfoot scores first and then Matthews scores. Boom, boom. Uh, 14 minute mark or 15 minute mark of the first period. So three nothing. And then. They get a late one. McKinnon rips it home. Campbell, like I think Colorado had maybe 10 or so shots in the, in the first period. Campbell looked fucking sharp and he looked sharp for most of the night. Jack did, but uh, what's his name? Whoever the fucking Kemper, I think Kemper, Kemper. Yeah, he gets, he lets in three on, on like nine shots. He gets the yank and in comes Francie. (laughs) I don't even know the guy's name. Francois. (laughs) What's his fucking name? France, Freddie Francois, Francois, or whatever. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> is, that's is exactly it? right. Is it really Freddie yeah, Francois? Yeah. I don't think it is, but like our boy Hutch, shout out Hutch. He catches with his with his right mid, eh? Yep. So I'm not a big fan of those those guys. Just like Darren Poopa <laughs> used to catch with his right mid, right? He did. Yeah. You want to tell a quick Darren Poopa story right now, or no? Yeah, Darren Poopa was supposed to come on our <laughs> show, and then he just ghosted us. 
Thanks a pant load, poops. So we'll, we might have him back on. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. We'll get we'll touch yeah. base with him again. Yeah. If anyone knows Darren okay. Poopa out there. <laughs> it's it's pronounced France Sue. Ready France. Pavel France. Oh, okay, right. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, all right. So three one going into the second period. And then here we fucking go. Big Dick Nick. Let's call him. <laughs> let's call him Big Dick Nick Richie. Okay. He clears waivers. No one around the NHL is interested in picking up old Nick Ritchie off of waivers. So he clears, gets sent to the taxi squad, thought maybe we won't see Nicky boy for a big, for a while, <laughs> big dick Nick. But all of a sudden, Mitch has COVID and Pierre Goose, our buddy Goose, Pierre Engvo has COVID. So Nick is just right back in the fucking lineup. Actually, let's put him on the third fucking line. The guy that was just on waivers. Fuck the fourth line. Let's put him right on the third line because he deserves that much. And, and not even that. When we, our second power play unit's been buzzing, let's fucking throw Richie on there too. Let's throw Nick Richie back on the set, just on waivers. Just maybe we're going to lose him to another team. Let's put him on the second power play unit. And they did that. And guess what fucking happened? He scores the fourth Leafs goal on the power play. All the work was done by Wayne Simmons in front of the net. Wayne Simmons did an incredible job to get that puck over to Richie. And Big Dick Nick just flicked it right into the fucking net for his second goal of the season to put the Leafs up 4-1. And that was, they peaked right there. Right at that Richie goal was the peak of the Leafs night. And then it was all fucking downhill from there. That's so true. It's so true. <laughs> that penalty he took with two minutes left. My God, man. My fucking God. But uh, so what'd you think of that? Like, were you doing cartwheels around the living room when Nick Ritchie scored? No, <laughs> I, I just thought like that's it's just such a. Uh, I don't want to say a leaf thing, but kind of kind of it's just such a leaf thing or a Nick Ritchie thing. The way things have been going like you knew he was something was going to happen with him that game after being on waivers, whether he was going to take a stupid penalty or get into a fight or score a goal. And he did two of the three two, of those. Two out of those. We got a meatloaf on this one. Two out of so three. Two out of three ain't bad, but you knew something. You knew he was going to make some sort of storyline in this game. And he did. It's just the way it goes. I mean, you're on waivers. He had a chance to do something. Other than those two things, I didn't really notice him. So it's 4 1 Leafs. And then the, that it just fucking blows up in their face. Kale McCarr scores late in the in the second, and it's uh, four two. And then we go to the third, and it's just like a fucking avalanche, a Colorado avalanche attack. Like Jack Campbell makes this ridiculous fucking save. I don't know if they were on the power play oh. at that time or not, but when they he were, fucking, yeah, Colorado he, was on the power. That was the that may be the save of the year or he does a, a highlight of the year for sure. Jackie boy does a full fucking baseball. Like he's stealing second base. Like he's sliding into second base and he just fucking rips the puck out of the air. Incredible fucking save. Did you see Kadri behind like standing at the side of the net? Yes, I did. Oh, it was so Couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. Puts his hands up on his head. He's just like, what the fuck was that? Yeah. Unbelievable. So so without Jackie. And then at the end of the game, he's blaming himself. Well, it was was all his fault. Without Wayne Campbell, they would have lost this fucking game in regulation. You let's bet be, your ass they would be serious here. So anyway, Landeskog, it was all Colorado in the third. Landeskog scores to make it 4-3. And you could just tell at this fucking time where the, where this was heading. Like once they started coming back, it was fucking over. Um, I don't know, JT Comfer or fucking I don't even know who that is, scored the tying goal at like midway through the third. And the Leafs were just in he- full on hang on mode at that point just to get it to overtime. Yeah, and they got Cam- the point. Yeah, Campbell. Yeah, but they blew a four fucking one lead. Give Colorado credit. Oh yeah, no, they, for, for sure. They, didn't, they could have been like, "Oh fuck, we'll see you tomorrow," but they didn't. No, you're right. They kept coming and coming and coming. So we yeah. go to overtime. It's That's tied. What she four, said. It's tied four four. It goes to overtime, and uh, the Leafs. Eh, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Did Matthews like get caught out there for too long? He was on the whole over the whole overtime shift. Okay, but, uh, here here's my thing about the overtime. I understand, I understand you want to like the Matthews Dean the, the, I, I want Matthews out there. Do, don't get me wrong, but sorry, sorry, just before you say that, overtime only it was it only lasted like a minute. They scored at the one twelve mark of the of the but overtime. Matthews was out the whole one. Yeah, Matthews, Riley, and Nylander started the overtime for the Leafs. Yeah, but I think 
if if it's me, it's so easy to change when you have the puck in three on three. The most important thing in a three on three overtime is winning that first face off. I'm going to put out my best face off person, whoever is like, well, who's that? Okay, I was going to talk about this. Who's that though? We- uh- I don't know. They're all, well, I mean, I, I know who it is. They're killing it. Is, well, is last it, night it was camp. Then you put, like I was going to say, whoever it was last night, I look at it and I'm like, okay. Win the draw, go to the bench. Win the draw, get the puck to Riley, go to the bench, get Matthews out. If you lose that faceoff, it is so hard to get the puck back. Did they, lose the, did they lose the draw? They lost the that faceoff. Campbell made a save. They lost the next faceoff. And I'm like. So just, Matthews both times? Yeah, and I'm like, just put. I thought it was Spezza who had the highest percentage last night, but if it's Camp, I'm pretty sure it was Camp. They were talking about Camp all like a lot last night. Put Camp out there, win the draw, give the puck to Riley, give it to Nylander, get the hell off the ice, get Matthews out there, but then you have possession. That's all you want in overtime, man. Get possession. Three on three is ridiculous. That that's fair. Um, so I don't even know if the Leafs got to change it. I think they did. Nylander went off uh, because I saw Tavares and Matthews were out there when when they scored. But uh, anyway. Like one t- a minute twelve into overtime isn't like a crazy long shift for Austin Matthews. Like it's not, it is, but it is in well the way everyone talks about playing in Colorado. They're like yeah. a minute twelve in Colorado is like a two minute shift anywhere else. Okay, fair, fair enough. Anyway, Colorado scores uh, right through the old fucking five hole on yeah, Jackie no, Boy. That, Campbell probably wanted that one back, but yep. no one, no one's going to point the finger at Jack Campbell. No, so you know. No, Jack's been the fucking MVP. Just ridiculous here. So they ended up losing 5-4 in overtime. They got a point, like you said. But just to go back to the face-offs for a second. So just dominated. Yeah, they don't the Leafs won 42 face-offs and Colorado won 22, but the Leafs were outshot 49 to 27. So Campbell makes 44 saves in a losing effort, but 50 fucking shots on net. By the Colorado Avalanche in this game, fifty. Jesus Christ! Yeah. Anyway, so it, fe- it felt like that. Even in the first period, I know we talk about the Leafs were dominating, but the shots on goal were heavily in favor of Colorado. Even after that first period, it's yeah. just the way Colorado plays. They just, man, they're so much fun to watch. I mean, um, yeah. Dude, like great, they're legit. Great like, team. They are you know, legit. Anyway, so yeah, so they lose 5 4 to Colorado. Hey everyone, Dale here. Thank you very much for watching the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. While you're here, why don't you take a look around at some of our other videos? And if you want to listen to the audio version of our podcast, we are available on all podcast platforms. You can check in the description below. And if you want to support the podcast, you can do so by going to our Patreon page and you can find a link to that as well. The Tippin' Maple Leafs podcast.